improvement versus innovation. Improvement is usually incrementally adding new features. Innovation, on the other hand, can turn an industry on its head because of being so unique and yet relevant to the consumer. Today, I want to introduce you to a true innovator. Welcome to the Home Improvement Report Podcast. I'm your host, Gary Neidert. My guest today is John Hines. He is the co-founder and COO of Tory Industries, a company that's pushing the boundaries of smarter and more efficient water heaters. We talk about the fantastic features Tory Industries has introduced to the tankless water heater industry, as well as some of the benefits of using their service. I had a great time talking with John and enjoyed learning about the new technology that has gone into the design process of Tory Industries' tankless water heaters. Let's listen in to what John has to say about all this and what Tory Industries is doing. Well, before we get into some of the cool things that Tory Industries is doing, uh, if you would tell us a little bit about your background and the story of how you got involved with this business. Sure, I appreciate that. So I've been uh, actually in data telecommunications for, gosh, the last 30 years. Uh, I have a background. I've had uh, director roles in sales and engineering organizations, so I've been on both sides of, of that. I as they say with engineering, now I know how the sausage is made and uh, it's it's not pretty. So sometimes the sales is a little more fun. Um, U.S. Marine, I got my start in high tech in the Marine Corps. So I'm really awesome. uh, thankful to them for that. It, it set me up well for life. Well, thank you um, for your service. I appreciate it. My, my pleasure. My pleasure. It. Thank you. Um, I don't know, several months back, probably close to about eight months ago, a gentleman reached out to me off LinkedIn and said he was starting a business and had looked at my, my background and thought I might align with that. I had recently gone through the Acton School of Business in their, what we call the 2020 COVID class. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, the class didn't get to graduate because of COVID. We couldn't go uh, to the school to finish off the final few weeks. But um, so he had seen my background and said, hey, I want to talk to you about this business and see if you're interested in, you know, talking with me about it. So talk to him and uh, he, he says it's about water heaters and there's some interesting things going on and um, he talked about his intellectual property well I've got two patents personally mm -hmm. and you know to me that's that's a key thing for any time you go into the market do you own the IP because if not the big guys are going to come and take it away in some shape manner or form as soon as it looks successful you do all that work it'll be gone mm -hmm. We looked at, uh, he has the agreements on, on basically his intellectual property, the patents um, and the right agreements with um, one of the national laboratories who produced the key piece uh, for this, this heating technology. And so that intrigued me. And, and so I started working with Gordon and uh, over time went from basically an advisor role. It was just he and I. So we said, hey, let's formalize it, make it a co-founder role. And um, we brought on multiple advisors from different industries, uh, different uh, you know, accounting backgrounds, technical backgrounds, HVAC backgrounds. You know, um, uh, Steve Jobs, I think, uh, said it best. You don't hire smart people and tell them what to do. You hire smart people and have them tell you what to do. Well, we're getting a lot of really good input, and they're, they're really helping us. So Gordon um, has the, the – well, now Tory Industries, uh, the company, has the rights to – a graphite foam that is manufactured is think of like a piece of pumice but it's porous and water can go through it mm -hmm. now the graphite foam is is patented and we have exclusive rights the foam itself can be heated with an induction coil so it's a magnetic field and uh, on our website i think we've got a video of this um where uh, and it's toryindustries.com uh that's two eyes t o o or II, mm -hmm. Tory Industries, where when the magnetic field heats up this foam, 
it went from a room temperature of 75 degrees Fahrenheit to just over 500 degrees Fahrenheit in about three seconds. Wow. Now, it, right, it's extremely low energy and it's a safe inert product. So you think about the amount of surface area of going through this, like, this granite foam mm -hmm. or, or graphite foam, not granite, gra uh, graphite, um, as compared to say a metal rod that's heating up or multiple metal rods. We've got so much more surface area that we don't need as much energy now to heat the graphite for the water to pass through. Let's say there's a, somebody turns a faucet on and they want 127 degree water out, and we can go ahead and calculate the heat necessary for that, that flow rate. But when someone turns the next faucet on and we detect that flow rate, we'll be able to take that, my apologies. No worries. Um, we'll be able to take that flow rate and actually increase the temperature of the foam to accommodate for that next flow rate and the next one and be so, able to decrease it on the fly. Will that happen automatically? Will the, the software within the system detect that and then cause uh, the heat to bump up? To exactly. Take care. Yep. Really? That's yeah. very cool. And, well, that's one of the, the things about, you know, I, I replaced water heaters in my own house. And when, when uh, this was about five years ago, I did a, a, a 70 gallon tank and, realized other than getting the fittings right, there really wasn't a whole lot to a hot water heater. You know, right. you plug it in so long as it's pre pre done. But again, even there, so the plug, you know, for a standard um, water heater, typically it's a 240 line mm -hmm. uh, for voltage. And you're looking at significant number of amps, 30, 50, 60 amp line has to get brought over to that. Our current modeling shows that we're gonna be able to, we're, we're looking to get this on a 120 volt line probably around a 20 amp circuit. So really? that's going to be able to retrofit into older homes where you're, you know, in the garage where most hot water heaters are, yeah. you're going to have to change the breaker from a 15 to a 20 and then change the outlet to accommodate that, that difference in the plug shape. But then the amount of energy you're going to be using overall over time should come down significantly because again, it's, it's an instant, it's not a tank. It's, mm -hmm. it's a tankless hot water heater. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're seeing the green, um, come out of this in a very big way that only going to be generating hot water when you need it. You only be using energy when you need it, and it should be significantly lower amounts of energy. Yeah. Now, which, is is it all electric, or can you use gas, or just strictly electric? Yeah, this is strictly electric, okay. and uh, for a couple of reasons. One, technically, it's the foam is is much easier to heat to those temperatures with a magnetic field. Um, and, and the government, state and federal governments are on a huge push to eliminate gas hot water heaters from the market. Really? They want I didn't know electric. That. And there's a lot of financial incentives out there. I'll just say, especially closer to the West Coast, uh -huh. to pull those hot water heaters out or new hot water heaters to be electric and not gas. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about that. Yeah, Very it's cool. um, there. There's. It has a lot to do with the greenhouse emissions, helping communities be more green. Um, and, and you know, there's some um, things about gas that, that folks don't like with the environment as well. So they're trying to get everybody on the electric. And then obviously, hopefully with the grid, they'll be moving to some form of sustainable energy source mm -hmm. that's greener and kind of make it work for everybody. So is this strictly a retrofit system or can you go into new home build? Uh, it's both actually okay. and you know with a new home build um we're so our initial product will be we're, we're designing one water heater to be able to facilitate anything from a small home up to a very large home and initially the the scale factor is if you you know if you've got the 2500 square foot home no problem you have the 9000 square foot home with you know instead of six to eight hot water outlets, you've got 15 to 20. We can just use a simple manifold for water in and water out, and then just put multiple heaters in parallel um, and still be able to bring the usage down because we're not running two, three or four uh, hot water heaters, tankless mm -hmm. or tank water heaters running high amperage. What's the maintenance on this? I know that, uh, I think my son-in-law had to do something to his tankless uh, in terms of flush it or something like that, is, is same thing with this unit, or is it uh, a little less maintenance issues? 
Uh, so we're, we're, we're hoping less maintenance issues. That's the goal. But mm-hmm. one of the things we're, we, and we can talk about it a little bit later, but our business model is very much going to involve the plumber mm-hmm. who installs it and keep them involved. We want this to be a very positive relationship between Tory, the plumber, and the consumer that has the water heater on their premises. Um, part of our focus will be build modularity into the unit. Mm-hmm. So that it is either serviceable by Tory and or the plumber. Um, so that if there is a, let's say they're in a hard water area and that foam with our uh, analytics are the sensors we're going to have in the unit will be able to detect restricted water flow. We'll know see if uh, gallons per minute in, mm-hmm. gallons per minute out. We'll be able to detect a pressure difference. And um, part of our goal with an intelligent water heater is to say, hey, you're going to have a failure or your performance is degraded so much that it needs fixing now or there's going to be issues later. So we want to be ahead of that. We don't want to be reactive to problems or people run out of hot water. If you ever taken a cold shower, you know what kind of motivator that can be to get hot water quick. So we want to we, yes. we want the plumbers to be we want to tell them, hey, your customer is about to have an issue. Why don't we resolve that together for them and you can go in and take care of it? Yeah. Um, so maintenance right now. Um, is hopefully minimal at best but we also in terms of maintenance we don't want anything in our process to wind up in a water fill um in a part in a water got water on the brain here uh-huh. in a landfill um we don't want anything to wind up so tory in fact will actually maintain ownership of the hot water heater so in our analytics when we see something going south we'll notify the plumber your customer is going to have an issue we'll send you the replacement, go in and replace it. There's no warranty on these because we own them. Uh We don't want them to fail. So it's a similar program to software now in the sense that we don't really own the software. We just, we lease it. Is that, is that how we, we, we call this hot water as a service. Okay. It's lowercase H H two O A A S hot water as a service. Very cool. Yeah. Have, have you, uh, is it on the market yet? Have you already got it into the market? No, actually it hasn't. Our, we're, we're still in our prototype. We've got a prototype being built by uh, a gentleman who's a phenomenal engineer, electrical engineer. Uh, as a matter of fact, he came up with the induction coil that we're using for the unit. He's got a patented coil technology that's incredible the way it uses energy and doesn't waste energy, which is another thing critical to our concept. Um, so we're, we're hopefully having our, um, prototypes complete and we should be in certification testing July, August, September. We're, you know, in that, that, um, crazy period right now, but hopefully July, August, September, we'll be into UL, uh, we'll be into the, the green energy certifications and be, um, coming into production late September, October. For next Very year. cool. So during this process, what's the craziest thing you've seen during starting up and, and working through all this process? So that um, it's an age related question for me. Um, the I, I've started my own businesses before and, you know, I've worked in corporate scenarios for 30 years. And the craziest thing for me is to see how the company is coming together in in a fashion that is i would say very contemporary with the younger culture mm-hmm. you know our, our ceo gordon's a younger gentleman brilliant tactician strategies but also very personable and he's putting this company together it, it's interesting as a collective where the advisors the the founders anyone we bring in has equal footing in terms of discussion and ideas and the collaboration. I, this is, I, I know it may not sound weird like a product, but I've never worked in an environment where it's just everybody comes together, is working really hard, sharing great. There's no intimidation, there's no hierarchy. It's like, hey, let's just do the best job we can. Yeah. As quick, as fast, but as best we can to get to make the product as good as we can for the, for the end user. Yeah. Because that's ultimately our success. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm loving it. I'm yeah. Absolutely loving it. Yeah. So that's a, uh, was that a hard adjustment for you personally coming into that kind of an environment? Yes, um, <laughs> honestly. 
<laughs> well, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a former Marine, and yes, I do have control issues. Um, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but that's okay. You know, over time, it is, well, you know, when, you don't have to be the smartest guy in the room all the time, and once you realize that, life gets so much easier. <laughs> and that's what I'm finding is there's so many smart people in that room. You know, I love listening to them and learning, you know, and, and folks, you know, half and even younger than that from my age. And I'm like, wow, these guys are really smart. And, and I'm learning so much even now at my age. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. I, I've not had the pleasure of working in that kind of an environment. It was everything I've been in has been um, so competitive and people don't want to share and right. if you share, then you get knocked down. No, 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 that's not a good idea. So it's very refreshing to hear a company that's like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, what you, the situation you just described, I've been in, and it's where knowledge is power. Uh -huh. And people use their knowledge for power. It's exactly the same thing here, but it's shared knowledge. But it's not for power. It's, it's like, hey, I've got all this information, and it's... You know, that's why we're talking to people from so many different areas at once. And they're just willing to tell you so much that you would think you go out and have to pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to a consultant. And people want to come in and help. Yeah. It, it's it's amazing. I love it. That's very cool. Yeah. So um, the what's been one of the biggest challenges you've had over the last few months trying to bring this to market? Are, are, mm -hmm said another way what's been the biggest oops uh oh moment and how did you recover so you know technically we're working through no, nothing's been huge at this point just some minor bumps in the road uh -huh. the biggest challenge we've had is is i think getting people to understand our business model yeah because they're they're like i'm sorry I, I get software as a service, you know, I get Uber, um, I get all these things, but hot water as a service, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's, but you have to go back into that, like, pre-Uber state. And then when you saw Uber come along, you're like, well, hell, they're just a taxi, right? No, yeah. actually, they're not. Yeah. It's a whole different model. And, and you got to look at it and start to understand it and go, damn, I wish I'd thought of that. Yeah. You know, because that's it's brilliant what they're doing. Well, that's kind of what Gordon came up with here is for our, our end users, we want to get them in at a lower cost up front for a tankless water heater. We, we go out, we've talked to plumbers and we tell them, you know, this is what we're looking at for an install price. And they're like, oh, you're going you're gonna to sell thousands of these at this cost. I said, well, it's a subscription, though. So they're going to pay us a certain amount of money per month for the life of the unit. And it's warrantied. So, you know, if it's breaking, we'll just upgrade it, send them a new and whatever that is. So they're kind of like, so there's no warranty because that's a huge issue. No warranty. So, and, and but you talk to people about this and they're like, well, okay, I get all that. But, you know, the then we then we start talking about the plumbers and, and trying to get them into... Uh, more of an, a, a proactive involvement and a positive place with customers. They don't always show up because there was something bad going on and being able to, we want to incentivize them mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, how Uber does for the driver. They say, Hey, you know, we're going to take a cut. You're going to take a cut. There's plenty to go around. We're actually going to be incentivizing the plumber who installs it with a portion every month of that subscription. So rather than, so I, I mentioned earlier, I had a business and I was, it was capitalism. I was put out of business by a big box store who was able to buy something in quantity a lot cheaper than I could. Hey, mm -hmm. had to close up my store and go away. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that. We're not doing discounted pricing for the big houses. We're not going distribution. If you want to make more money with Tory, you just install more hot water heaters. You will receive each month part of that subscription service. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and it continues over time. Plumber. Exactly. Talking, oh, that's fantastic. Right. Because we want them to be involved. We, oh, we yeah. want to be able to go back to that guy and say, hey, remember that hot water heater you've been for Bob and Sally there, at, you know, one, two, three acre lane? Yeah. Well, we've detected some anomalies. We want you to go call them and, and set up some time to replace it. 
we'll send you the new unit. And it's a one man unit. You don't have to send a truck, you know, a big truck and two guys and, you know, take it to the landfill, take the old one off the wall, send it to us and put the new one up. So are the, the plumbers, are they catching on to the concept about the reoccurring revenue for them? Not initially, you know, it's because it's, it's such a different concept, but it, it doesn't make sense until I walk them through a scenario. I'm like, yeah. Hey, you know, let's, let's just use five bucks a month. Okay. So five bucks a month for a hot water heater, that's $60 a year. And they're like, yeah, $60. Well, if you install a hundred of those, that's, um, what? 6,000 or 600, uh, no 6,000, sorry, 6,000 a year. I'm doing my math there. That's so, okay. So you install a hundred, you get 6,000 a year, year two, and then year three and year four. But in year two, let's say you install another hundred, that's 12,000. Now you're coming into and then in year three, so this is an annuity, that, like an annuity that grows yeah. over time. You explain the math and they're going, so you're going to pay me continually after I install this, rather than give me a you know 18% discount up front off MSRP. Exactly. And when they get that point, they love it. That's a fantastic concept. <laughs> That's brilliant. Like That's brilliant. Yeah. But it's but it's also equitable, which is something else I like about this company. Yeah, it, it there is in a subscription. I, I think we're very fair to the end user. I think we're fair to Tory, and we're fair to the plumber because mm -hmm. we need them. You know, it, this is a relationship that we want to be in with everybody. So why not make sure they're taken care of as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This is a great concept. That's fantastic. Um. So uh, over the last year, I mean, we, we've all been dealing with the COVID stuff. Mm -hmm. Has that affected y'all in, in the development of the water heater and what you're doing? Or, or ha have you not really noticed any of it at all? So far, I, I don't think we've really noticed it. Um, we're, um, Gordon, our CEO is in Montana. I live in Idaho. Uh, our electrical engineers back in New Jersey. We've got advisors around the country. We get on a, a Microsoft Teams call when we need to. We'll have a couple. We've got a couple company calls every week where we just kind of touch base, make sure everybody's you know doing what they need to get done or ask questions. Uh, Video has been awesome tool for us. Yes. Um, and having you know a collaboration tool, we use Teams. It could be anything, but you know having a collaboration tool has been um awesome we i i honestly don't we, we you know i don't even know if we're going to get an office you know <laughs> uh right now for the given year uh we'll need some corporate entity somewhere obviously to to you know do some basic things but um yeah for the for the next year i don't think we're going to have any real settled place yeah and, and you know i think there's a lot of companies that have figured out they don't have to have all the employees in one central place that for the most part, uh, you know, people will work and they'll actually work a little harder when they're on their own. And there are some that have to be in an office and I understand that, but mm -hmm. I've been a proponent for being able to work from home to office from home. I mean, what you see right here, this is my setup in my home and I've done this since 1997. Yeah. So I, I I hate that the COVID thing happened, but I think it's uh, opened up a lot of eyes in the corporate world to go. We can do this, and right. um, and and it's not not that hard to do. And, but like you said, there will come a time to have a central place to come meet, and there's nothing mm -hmm. like uh, being able to meet in person, but you don't have to do it day in and day out necessarily so I right right and that's i've i've been um you know, i've got an audio and video uh background in my professional life and video is great to get work done um but it's a very poor substitute for leadership and i i think leadership happens in in person mm -hmm. when you sit down and talk to the person you read their body language they can read mm -hmm. yours you know so that that is an important function we are going to have to bring together, but I think right now we're we're just 
at too high a level uh, in terms of operations as we get more into a day-to-day -day structure of things needing to occur, then we'll need to get a little more, uh, call it contemporary and you know, get, get at least one location going. Yeah. What are y'all doing or, or have you started actively marketing the product yet? Or is that something a little bit later on down the road? And, and how do you plan to market it? Sure. Um, really good questions. We're, we just completed, well, we're, I think next week, wrapping up a friends and family financing round and a seed financing round, which uh, I heard, I saw on Teams today, that looks like it might wrap up sooner than we thought with our full expectation being needed. I hope that happens, but uh, I don't know yet. Um, that'll give us the funding. We're, we've, we have done some market research to help us with our marketing. And it, it's very interesting, the portions of this concept as it applies to geographies and generations. Um, you know, with geographies, it's there. there's clearly incentive in some of the more, um, what I say, the more green states. I know mm -hmm. use California, for example, they are coming out with financial incentives to get rid of the gas water heaters and to go electric. And we're hoping our energy star ratings will help us be forefront with the utility companies when they say, if you want to be really green, you know, go Tory uh, and, and can help us in that way. Um, also, we also found with um, age demographics in those groups, there's um, certain portions of the population that I would say are are willing to, um, you know, it's, I, I, I got to use the word, it's not a good marketing word, but they're willing to take the risk on a new company mm -hmm. because it is using more advanced technology. It's a circular economy where nothing goes into the landfill. It's green and sustainable. And they're okay saying, hey, you know what, if this gets you off the ground, we'll, we'll go that route. Um, would so you we, we want to- Would you consider yeah. them early adopters? Yeah, well put. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. I, they're, they're willing to be the, will, the, the early adopters to get it off the ground because yeah. I think they see the upside and the benefit. Um, and then we've got the other folks that um, I would say generationally, like myself, we're like, does it pencil out, you know? <laughs> Give me the numbers for 10 years mm -hmm. and does it work? And it does actually, it's, it's nice that we can target both, but our target marketing will be in the greener states at probably the more early adopters, folks who would be willing to say, yeah, I like the idea, I wanna back that company. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and, and you, we've covered a lot of ground and very interesting, but is there, What's probably the most important thing that you would want your clients, your customers, your prospects to know about Tory Industries and what y'all are what y'all are doing? Singular. There's a bunch, but singular. Um, yeah, you know, I, th I think there's a lot of things that Tory's doing that that have applicability. That as we've seen historically over companies that have made um, big changes in various markets, and I'll throw Uber out again, mm -hmm. uh, or Lyft, you know, um, that there are companies that want to do good for the world. Um, you know, we're, we're founded here in the United States. We love our business model here. That's full you know, with the product that they receive, we want our partners to be successful. You know, it's, <clears throat> I, I think from the business side of the house, I really want people to take a look at what we're doing, how we're doing it and why. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, it, it's a company where we are truly trying to make everyone um, happy with what they, their involvement with the company and why they're involved with the company. It's different happiness in different ways for different places and different people, but you know, I really want folks to, to look into Tory for those reasons. On the technical side of the house, um, you know, Gordon got the rights to this, this, um, this uh, foam from one of the national laboratories and just ran with it. And, you know, was able to take something like that and tie it to a cloud concept. And the sensors that we, we hope to put into the unit Hopefully we're, we're I, I don't want to say too much, but you know, it, it's not just going to be water flow in, water flow out and temp. We want a plethora of information that we can actually get from that device to bring analytics back 
Um, that that's kind of our secret sauce. That foam and that induction coil. That's that's the key to our product, and we're really glad to have that. But then everything that we're building around it with the cloud infrastructure, what we want to be able to deliver to the end user, uh, I think should motivate people to, you know, here's a piece of graphite, big deal. Well, if you think about it in the right way, it is a big deal and, and do that more frequently. And I think a lot of good things can happen when people do that. You know, it, 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 the way I'm hearing this and understanding it is that there's a difference between um, improvement and innovation. Improvement comes in small steps. You know, a company, you know, they add a feature that their competitor doesn't have, and then the competitor adds another feature and whatever. Someone who innovates just tur totally turns everything upside down, and it's hard to catch up with the innovators. And it sounds like that's what y'all are doing. Your, your innovators in this industry. I, I truly believe that. Um, and it's, you know, we're both coming from outside the industry and that's that's good and bad at the same time. Uh, you know, but I, I think, you know, it's, it's an old saying, but a fresh set of eyes on an old problem can solve a lot. And I, I really think that we're gonna come in here. I, I can see other companies in the industry saying, hey, not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. How can we do what they're doing? And I, I'd welcome that if it helps move move things forward for, mm -hmm. you know, people and how we, we, in this case, just heat our water. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Forerunners. Uh, now, I heard something one time. Um, how'd they say it? The, uh, the forerunners are the ones that gets the arrows in the back. Have y'all had any arrows in the back? over this last not, year have you escaped that no not yet but um i've had gordon and i've had some discussions about you know the the future when more word gets out uh you know tactically what to what things we can expect and yeah. you know um it, it's good to have a battle plan ready or yes. at least a response plan ready for those things and we're we're mentally and on paper crafting some of those to make sure we're set. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. Um, so are you at a point where, um, excuse me here just a second. Sure. Um, are are y'all at a point where you're welcoming people to, to contact you about what's going on for whenever you're a, uh, ready to release the product or uh, are you at that point yeah. yet? Great question. So yeah, on our website, there is a sign up uh, okay. and that's more for information purposes. That's, you know, we, we want end users uh -huh. who want to, you know, hey, I'd love to get one of these when it's out. We want plumbers to say, you know, I'm definitely interested in that recurring revenue stream you're talking about. Uh, we'd also like architects and engineers oh, yeah. to get in touch with us because we would love to help them. You know, if you're architecting a green building and you want to bring those statistics to your builder and your investor, I think we can be a great component in, in helping, you know, those numbers. And we, we're open to talking to anyone that has good ideas. Absolutely. Have you thought about, and I'd love to say, no, we haven't. Let's talk, yeah. you know, yeah. that'd be great. Well, what's the best way for someone to contact you? So our website, uh, toryway.com, T-O-R-I-I-W-A-Y.com. And uh, there's a contact page on there. Uh, there's email, or you can email info at toryway.com. Of course, Gordon and I will get that uh, email. So we're looking forward to, like I said, anybody has any thoughts or ideas or uh, challenges. You know, we're, we're not just looking for the positive. It's like, I don't think it's going to work because of this. Tell me. I, I'd love to know, you know, what, what those are. And, yeah. you know, if there's hurdles we need to get over, I'd rather address them now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we've been uh, been going along here. This has been great, man. I, Thanks, this has been some great information that I've learned, and uh, never thought Appreciate that you it. could do that with a with a tankless water heater. <laughs> but this is fantastic. So, yes. well, John, I've, I've really enjoyed our conversation today, and, and thanks again for taking the time to be a part of the Home Improvement Report podcast. Thank you, Gary, and thank you to your audience for listening to this. And like I said. Yes feel free to reach out to us. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. 
Well, to my listeners, make sure that you check out toriway.com, T-O-R-I-I-Way.com when you need to update your hot water heater and make it a tankless. I think this is a great concept. So thanks for listening to my conversation with John Hines, the co-founder of Tory Industries. Was this a great interview or what? I really enjoyed learning about what they're doing, and I trust you did too. Be sure and keep up with what Tory Industries is doing by going to their website, toryway.com. It's T O R I I W A Y.com. Toryway.com. So go check them out. What's coming up next on the Home Improvement Report? Well, I'm constantly searching for new information in the home improvement industry that consumers and contractors will enjoy. Also, I'm working on lining up some fantastic guests that I know you'll get some great insight from. And I bet you probably know someone that would be a great guest for the Home Improvement Report, right? Let me know a little bit about them and their story. I'm always looking for great stories of business successes. You know, the story behind the story. Check us out on our website, thehomeimprovementreport.com. And of course, you can also go to Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and much more. Subscribe to the podcast and listen to the previous episodes of the Home Improvement Report. Contact me if you have any questions regarding today's podcast. And I'm Gary Neidert. You've just experienced the Home Improvement Report podcast. Call me, 972-771-7899. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. <music>